All right, so let's knock out um, the video on how each of these systems um, work with other systems. And we'll start at the very beginning with the skeletal system, which is where we started all of these notes to begin with. Um, I think the easiest thing to think about um, when you talk about the skeletal system and what system does the skeletal system work with the most, um, I think the easiest one is when we have movement. Um, because the skeletal system works with the muscular system. That's how we move. The skeletal system works with the muscular system. And I think that that's probably going to be one of the easiest questions that they might have on a test, if that's even on there. Um, how does the skeletal system work with the muscular system? Well, it works for movement. Or what two systems work together What the most to cause movement? I mean, there are other systems that work together to cause movement, but which one should really come to mind the most? Well, it would be the skeletal system and the muscular system. Um, if you're thinking about um, how does the skeletal system um, help some of these other systems, like like the respiratory system, how in the world do they work together? Well, I mean, you know, you got to think like the skeleton pro provides us with protection, um, and the ribs are a huge protection. They protect our lungs. Our lungs sit right behind there. Um, and that's for a very specific reason. You don't want your lungs to get hit. That could cause uh, severe damage to you. It could kill you. Um, so your, your skeletal system provides protection um, to many um, systems. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Mr. Bullens, it doesn't provide any protection to my um, digestive system. There's no bones covering it. Yes, but it sits um, right back. You can kind of see right in here in, in, in those where those hips are kind of dug out. Um, that's where your digestive system sits. It does offer some protection in there. Your digestive system doesn't need as much protection as um, it would um, in, in others. Um, I also have to think about the skeletal system um, in protection with the way it, the skull protects the brain. And I know that the spine protects the spinal cord. Um, and that's huge for the nervous system. Um, and that's the way the skeletal system works with that. Um, now, when we're thinking about the circulatory system, this is the one, I guess, odd thing that we don't think about a lot when we think of the skeletal system. It actually makes red blood cells. Um, and I would say that's definitely how it partners with the circulatory system. So that's how those two systems work together, is the skeletal system makes the red blood cells, the circulatory system circulates those. Um, now let's talk about the muscular system. Um, we know that the muscular system works with the skeletal system. We literally just talked about that, and that is to provide movement. Um, however, how does the muscular system work with the digestive system? That's a great question. That could end up on the test, and it literally is from the very start. The, the act of chewing is from muscles. Your tongue is a muscle. Remember, it's one of the things that starts breaking down your food. Um, when you swallow your food, smooth muscle moves your food to the stomach. When your food is in the stomach, smooth muscle around the stomach churns the stomach around, breaking that food down even more. Your food is then transported into your um, intestines, small and large intestines, and smooth muscle again um, through peristalsis squeezes that food through your digestive system. So the muscular system moves food through the digestive system. That's most definitely how that works. Um, we, we talked a little bit about the excretory system. I know that I posted a very quick video and an answer to someone. I didn't actually post one on here, and that's okay. There's not a lot of questions about the excretory system. Um, but there is muscle um, around um, your, your excretory system. So when your bladder gets full, there's, there's smooth muscle around. Well, not smooth muscle, sorry, muscle around that. You control it, so it's not smooth. Um, and it squeezes and it helps you pee. I mean, that's one of the ways that that works out. Um, how does your muscle help the respiratory system? Well, I mean, if we think back to what we saw, we have that diaphragm right under our lungs. And that contracts and expands and it helps to take air in and push air out of our lungs. So that's how the muscular system works with the respiratory system. I think almost as easy, if not easier, than how does the muscular system work with the skeletal system is how does the muscular system work with the circulatory system? Well, the heart is part of the circulatory system. It's a huge muscle, and it is what moves all of the blood. Now, when you're talking about the nervous system, um, these two systems do work together. Um, 
they send signals back and forth. Um, if you were to walk into the kitchen, you maybe accidentally put your hand on the stove. A signal goes from your hand to your brain, and it says, this is way too hot. And your brain, in such a fast time, sends a message back to your hand to tell you to move your hand out of the way. And, and the amount of time that that takes is like so very little. That's how fast those messages are traveling. But your muscular system is sending and receiving messages from the nervous system. When you get super cold and you start to shiver, like you can't really control that. That is your nervous system and your muscular system working together to say, hey, muscle system, when you move a lot, you generate heat. You get the body warm. I want you to move and shiver until you get the body temperature up to something that I think is a little more reasonable than what it's at right now because being this cold is not good for the body. Moves us into the circulatory system. Now, we've already covered how does the circulatory system and the skeletal system work together. Well, the skeletal system makes the red blood cells. The circulatory system circulates that. We've already covered how the circulatory system and the muscular system work together. Look back here. There it is, that big heart, that most important muscle that moves blood through our system. So that's how the circulatory system and the muscular system work together. All of the muscles need blood. They need those nutrients, they need that oxygen, they need that gas exchange, and the circulatory system gets that to them, and it's pumped there by the heart. Um, but how do the digestive system and the circulatory system work together? Um, that's a little tougher. Um, but when you break it down into what the two things do, it really does make it kind of easy. The digestive system breaks food down into nutrients. How do those nutrients get transported around the body? In the circulatory system. So the digestive system breaks the food down. The circulatory system moves those nutrients around the body to where they need to be moved to. Um, when you start thinking circulatory system and respiratory system, how do they work together? Well, one of the big things that your blood does is it moves gases, it transports gases, gas waste, and oxygen around the body. When you breathe in, you're taking in oxygen. And then those little capillaries that we talked about that are attached um, to the, uh, to the ends of your bronchioles, they take in the oxygen into the blood. That oxygenated blood is moved through your system to all of your muscles and everything in your body that needs oxygen, and carbon dioxide is given off, and that's brought back by the circulatory system. So the circulatory system and the respiratory system, they help each other by moving oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out of the body, which is a very, very vital thing. Um, our nervous system keeps our heart beating without us having to think about it. That's important. The circulatory system supplies your brain with the blood that it needs in order to, like, survive. Um, if you lose the blood flow to your brain, you're not going to make it very much longer. So those two work together. This is where I get to the part where I'm starting to realize, you know, we've covered so much of this already. Um, and I don't know that this is, like, uh, anything other than review for most of you. So now I'll look at the respiratory system. And if I go back to the very beginning, we've already covered how the respiratory system and the skeletal system work together. The respiratory system is protected by the skeletal system, and the respiratory system provides that oxygen that all of our body needs. How does the respiratory system work with the muscular system? Well, you can almost see it right here under the lungs is that diaphragm that expands and contracts and pushes the lungs up and lets the lungs expand out to take in oxygen and then to breathe out carbon dioxide. So that's how those two work together, and we've already talked about that. Um, the respiratory system is what delivers the oxygen needed to your digestive system, and your digestive system sends the nutrients to your respiratory system that it needs to function. So those two, although they may not work as closely as, let's say, muscles and skeleton, they do work together and they need each other in order to survive. Now, we need to look at how does the respiratory system work with the circulatory system. We just talked about that. It's that exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide and that transport system of the circulatory system moves all of that oxygen around the body where it needs to be. Now, the nervous system plays a very important role most of the time. Most of the time, we don't have to think about breathing because those signals are being sent 
and our diaphragm is doing its thing, our lung is doing its thing, and we don't have to think a lot about that. Yes, I can think, breathe in and breathe out, and I can do it. <sighs> but I don't do that all the time, and that's a good thing that I don't have to think about that because there's way too many other things going on in our life for us to have to think about that. Um, and that's controlled by the nervous system, which is extremely, extremely important for it to happen. So the further along that we get, we get even more repetition. So digestive system, um, how does it work with the skeletal system? Well, number one, the skeletal system offers it some protection. It holds it in place. And the digestive system breaks down the food into the nutrients that our skeletal system needs and to, to grow, to maintain, to stay healthy, and to make those red blood cells. Um, the digestive system works with the muscular system. We know that pairing is the digestive system gets the nutrients needed for the muscular system, and that smooth muscle moves the food through our body. How does the digestive system and the respiratory system work together? Well, the respiratory takes in the oxygen the digestive system needs. The digestive system breaks down food into nutrients that the respiratory system needs. Um, and our nervous system really does handle a lot of those things. Um, there are times that we say to ourselves, man, I am hungry. That's when our stomach is empty and our body is starting to run low on nutrients. Sometimes you even get a headache when you need to eat. And that's your body's way of saying, hey, it's time to ingest some nutrients. I need this to feed the entire body. Your stomach might rumble. Um, and so that those are things that happen inside of your body. And then when you start to smell pizza, and your mouth starts watering. That's all nervous system and digestive system, digestive system interactions in place, which is extremely important. So now we've covered the digestive system. Brings us full circle back to the nervous system. Okay, so again, it, it feels like a lot of repetition, and it is, but that's okay. Um, I don't mind repeating this. And if there are questions, then you can you can ask them. I'll be happy to answer them. How does the nervous system and the skeletal system work together? Well, the nervous system controls the entire body, and, that, and that's an extremely important thing. I mean, it controls everything. That's something that you don't want to have any outside interaction with, and that's why the skeletal system is so important in protecting the brain and protecting the spinal cord. Um, it's important that we have that spine. It's important that we have that skull to protect our brain. Otherwise, um, it could get damaged a lot easier um, and then that could wreak havoc all throughout the body because the nervous system controls everything. We've talked about how the nervous system controls muscles, whether those muscles are um, voluntary or involuntary. Both of those um, are important ways that our body moves. We've talked about how our nervous system works with our digestive system, whether it's um, the involuntary movement of food, whether it's the brain telling us that we need to eat um, and take in food or maybe to take in some water. It's important that we have the digestive system and the nervous system interacting. Um, the nervous system controls respiration or breathing in and out. Most of the time, we don't have to control that. We can when we want to, Then, which is important. It's very important um, that we can control our breathing. Otherwise, jumping off the diving board, if we couldn't control breathing in and breathing out, would be a really ugly situation once we went underwater. It's important that we can hold our breath. But we use that. We, we control that. We send the signal saying, do not breathe in, breathe out. Now, when we're in the bed sleeping, we want something to tell us to breathe in and breathe out. Um, so it's, it's, it's important that the nervous system can control whether um, it's voluntary or involuntary breathing or not breathing if you're holding your breath underwater it's important that your nervous system can do that um, and again it also controls your circulatory system um, your heartbeat and the movement of blood throughout your body so all of these systems work together i think we've covered enough about how they do um, but with this video at least we've gone through and and talked about it um, and you can use this as a quick quick way um, to take some notes if you needed to go back and finish up any of those things in your project, which is fine. Um, we've got a couple more days before we do that. And then we'll have that one last time before we um, get to the test on Friday. So Thursday, we will do a review. Um, and I'll, push, I'll post that um, probably tomorrow evening um, because I'm heading into school to pack up all of those uh, last rounds of packets tomorrow. And I think that is it. If you have questions, just put them on Google Classroom.